I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to hand you over to Austin Thomas, who uh, is going to do this presentation. Um, so Austin can start sharing his screen and, and we'll take it from there. And uh, Austin Thomas, along with lots of other members of the club, has uh, his EFI of distinction. I think all of them have some sort of photographic distinctions, uh, but Austin is an EFI of distinction holder and um, we're looking forward to it. So Austin, we'll hand over to you. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, um, that's a very, very nice warm uh, welcome. Can I just check you can hear me and everyone can see the screen okay? Yes. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's perfect. Yeah, I mean, first, first of all, on behalf of uh, Wigan Town, you know, thank you for this opportunity to be able to come and uh, and talk to so many people in uh, different parts of the, of the world. It's um, yeah, I mean, the, the, nobody's enjoying the virus, but it's certainly opened up uh, the creativity of individuals to try and uh, uh, and sort of share and collaborate and, and reach uh, corners of of the world that we, as you say, as a small club in Wigan, um, it's not uh, easy for us to be in. Uh, the Dominican Republic and uh, various other parts of the world. So thank you on behalf of the club that we've got this uh, uh, this opportunity. Um, I mean, to, to be honest, Paul, you, you've just done my presentation. I think your introduction was uh, was excellent. So maybe we'll just skip to Q and A. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So in a nutshell, I mean, and we have been asked to sort of uh, perhaps explain a little bit about the club, a little bit about who we are, what our philosophy is, because uh, I know that uh, there's a there's an enigma around Wigan Town. We sometimes call the machine. There's all sorts of rumours as to you know who we are and that we're a secret club and and what have you. So hopefully, you know, this uh, this presentation will show that we're just humans. Yeah, we love photography and that we're passionate about it. We're a good bunch of friends and uh, hopefully you know I can uh, put to bed some of the myths and uh, and share with you uh, uh, a little bit uh, about uh, Wigan Tem. Um, interesting that uh, uh, Ricardo made the, I think you used the word feared, which uh, which also made me laugh a little bit. As I say, we're humans, we're in the same hobby and uh, and enjoying the same uh, passion as uh, as everybody else. So yeah, hopefully uh, we can we can get rid of the feared band. We're, we're friends in, in an international uh, community and, uh, uh, and I certainly feel comfortable being here presenting uh, to this audience. So who, um, if I could advance my screen, there we go. So I was, I was um, in the brief, we were sort of posed some questions, you know, who are we, what's our philosophy, how do we function, and essentially what, what makes us tick. So in, in one sentence, uh, we're, we're a group of friends and we come together to advance and share our love of photography. Uh, and in essence, that's it. I think we're, we're definitely, uh, you'd, I would put the emphasis on the friends. I think if, um, if people sort of look at us a, as a group, uh, we're not acquaintances, which uh, I think in a large photographic club, there will for sure be some friends, there will be some family, and uh, um, but there'll be lots of acquaintances. And uh, Wigan Town is a small group. We are friends. We notice when somebody's missing and uh, et cetera. So it's uh, it's a small uh, club. Um, and I've, I've listed here sort of what we're not in, in order to, for, to try and help people understand perhaps what we are. And I go on on the next slides to explain a little bit more about what we are. Uh, but we're not um, a, I call it a classical UK camera club. Um, I see certainly the, there's kind of a recipe for uh, a camera club here in the UK, and it's probably not too dissimilar from, uh, from other countries. Um, but if I highlight some of the differences, and I'll say in the future slides, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more detail. Um, we don't have a, a dedicated club meeting place. Yeah, we don't have internal leagues or classifications of individuals within the within the club. Uh, we don't have internal competitions like other clubs do. We don't have guest speakers uh, like many of the bigger clubs do. We don't have a hierarchy, and we laughed in the in the beginning. The like, you know, the I think uh, Robert was announced as, as as president, and I might be sort of competition secretary, etc. Yes, we've got roles, but we're we're uh, we don't have a hierarchy within uh, Wigan Town. Um, and last but not least, we're not for everyone. We, we accept that. That uh, um, I say, I'll, I'll go on because I can explain uh, more of these on the next uh, couple of slides. <clears throat> So, as I say, we don't have a dedicated club meeting place. So most clubs in, in, in the UK have got a large membership, far, far greater than, than ours, and, and they have a, um, like a church hall or a, um, a clubhouse or a, a community uh, location, uh, which, which can house lots of people. 
Um, we meet in our homes, and I think uh, this has uh, pros and cons. Uh, first of all, uh, it limits our ability to have a large membership. Um, you know, I, I would certainly uh, uh, you know, struggle to house too many more people in, in the house, and, and, and we don't use any one home either. We vary the, the, which house that, uh, that we go to. Um, so that limits us in terms of membership size, which can be a challenge, but it also fuels this friendship and feeling of, of being part of a family. We're, we're a very small, intimate group. We know each other and, uh, and that friendship and I think being in people's homes and you welcome somebody into your home, uh, it kind of it, it bonds and, uh, and brings us together. Um, Second point, we don't have uh, these internal leagues or classifications. Um, essentially, uh, uh, clubs here, and I say I'm talking sort of a uh, typical UK photography clubs, it might be different in, in other countries, but typically here, there's certainly the larger clubs, you would be labeled as like a beginner or an intermediate or an advanced, and you would compete in that little pool. So you'd compete maybe in the uh, intermediates pool and you had to prove your worth there in order to move up to an advanced pool. Uh, Wigan tends not like that. We're, we're all equal. Uh, there's nobody that's uh, superior or inferior to anybody else. And, uh, and I think uh, this uh, idea of um, yeah, not having perhaps subsets within a club is not in Wigan Tens ethos. We want everybody to feel equally valued and, and equally part of the, of the club. And to that uh, 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 reasoning and logic, we don't have internal competitions. Um, we're not there to compete against each other. Uh, we want to collaborate. We want to learn from each other. We want to collectively grow as, as a group, uh, get better. And, uh, and ultimately we want to, we can turn as a club to do well. And um, that's the, the ethos behind it. We don't want, uh, we don't want infighting and, and, uh, and people sort of, um, as I say, different leagues or people seen as like the A, the A section and, and others seen as the B section. Um, yes, of course, you know, again, we're humans. We celebrate each other's set, uh, success. Uh, many of us get uh, individual medals. Many of us uh, uh, are successful in, in, the, in the FIAT distinctions, as well as in the UK distinctions and the uh, PAGB distinctions and uh, uh, British Photographic Exhibitions. So um, we will celebrate each other's as, as success as family members would and as friends would, uh, would. But our objective as a group is, is to compete with you guys. We want to compete with the rest of the world, not, uh, not with our fellow uh, 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 club members. Um, we don't have guest speakers, I mentioned. Um, we're simply too small. Uh, so we, we're in, uh, we, we work in our own houses. Uh, we don't have enough chairs in our houses to house uh, anything like uh, the number that we would need to have a guest uh, speak, speaker. Um, but we are, we do teach ourselves. So we've all got different skills within the club. We've got different uh, levels of knowledge in certain genres or certain pieces of equipment or certain and processing uh, techniques. And the collaborative spirit within Wigan 10 means that, you know, if, if somebody said to me, how, how did you do that, Austin? It, it's, I don't, I'm not competing with, with all the members. So I'm therefore willing to share and, and help. And, and I'm, you know, I, I use myself as an example because I'm presenting, but all the other team members as well um, are, are equally willing to share. And if, if it's a simple question, then, then for sure it's just answered there and then. But if there's interest, then, you know, a small subset would then meet and say, well, actually, I, I really want to learn more about this particular thing, uh, or I've seen something and, and can you help me? And then we'll put a dedicated evening on just to demonstrate it, to, to, uh, to, to show it, to explain it, to do a practical, to, to help people sort of upskill and get uh, a, a greater knowledge on, on whatever area it happens to, uh, to be of interest to them. Uh, we certainly support the idea of guest speakers. I mean, uh, typically our members are guest speakers on other camera clubs uh, agendas. So we, we, we will, you know, are happy to share knowledge and do presentations like this to our, our, local, uh, our local clubs. Uh, we are typically or have you know, are, are in the pool of people that get selected to judge international competitions and, uh, and national competitions and also the internal competitions that some of our local clubs uh, uh, run. So we're, you know, we, we're, we're not against them. It's just our practice. It's just where we couldn't get a guest speaker that's expecting an audience of 200 people like, like today um, to come and talk to 12 of us in Wigan in, in, a, in a back room of somebody's house. It's, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's not just not practical. Um, this one is, uh, we don't have a hierarchy, and this is probably for me one of the biggest um, um, successes of, of Wigan 10. Um, everybody is equal, yeah, because we're small, because we don't, uh, you know, we, we 
group, we're a, a small group. Um, everybody has to be equal. Um, everybody's opinion is valid. Um, and again, I just think it's a balancing effect. It, it, it builds on the fact that we're not labeled as beginners and, uh, and advanced. Um, everybody's opinion is valid. We're, there are different personalities within the group. Some are more confident to talk. Some are, 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 are uh, it would be not the first person to lead a topic of, of conversation. Um, but as a group, we will seek out their opinion. So if somebody is quieter, is naturally uh, um, uh, more reserved, then we'll make sure that everybody has a chance to talk. Everybody gets uh, the possibility to comment and say what they like and say what they don't like. Um, we respect each other, uh, even when we disagree, which which we do. <laughs> Wigan 10 is a competitive group of individuals. And, you know, in anything competitive, athletes, in, in, in whatever the uh, your particular level is, if you're competitive, then, you know, there's some jostling for position, there's some elbows, there's some sort of uh, your, your, your personality is, is in that way. And therefore, we don't always agree. You know, we have differences of opinion. One, you know, some people would see it one way, some people would see it another way. Um, but we certainly uh, respect each other. And again, thinking of the family, um, you know, you can have disagreements with your family, but we come through it and, uh, and we, you know, we work with it and, and accept that uh, people have got different opinions. Um, and on a, a similar vein, anyone can speak their mind and, and say what they like or they dislike uh, without fear of upsetting someone. And I think this is key. Yeah, we, we, I think, again, if I look at some of the, the classical clubs, um, there's almost like a fear that if you say something, it might upset somebody else within, within the group and therefore you, you won't make a comment. If there's somebody who's labelled as an excellent photographer and, and you see an image and think, well, actually, I don't understand it or it doesn't, it's not, I, I, I miss something. If you raise your hand in some clubs, it would be, ooh, you, you, know, you would almost hear the tutting within the room. Um, it's not like that at Wigan Town. It's 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 quite the opposite. Um, you know, people say exactly what they like and uh, and what they dislike, and and so it doesn't uh, uh, doesn't upset anybody. We work as a team. So we uh, and then the, the next bullet point gives an example of that. Um, when we select images for a, for a competition, uh, we select it as a group. So um, um, we're small, so we can find flexibility in terms of when we meet. So we, we do have a regular meeting uh, uh, time of, of a Tuesday evening, um, but we're not fixed that if actually we can get more members on a Wednesday this week or more members to participate on a Thursday this week because we're selecting for something like the FIAP uh, World Cup, then for sure we will uh, we'll switch the meeting date to another date to, to accommodate it. But the important thing here is, is that no one has a priority. Nobody, um, you know, we have a, an equal number of votes um, and you know, the, there is no um, you know, one person that says, OK, right, well, the executive decision is and I've taken it and that's, and that's what's happening. Um, so, yeah, we, we select images for competition as a group and everybody is, uh, is equal. Um, yes, we have roles within the club, say the president, competition secret secretary, the, the, but these are these are jobs, these are tasks, these are this this is is uh, so as competition secretary, for example, this is a coordination role. It is not a uh, the the um, doesn't give that person the right to pre-select or, or filter images and or make decisions as to which images are most suitable for any particular uh, club. We do that collectively and, uh, and decide as a, a, as a group. Um, and last but not, not least, it's, it's not for everyone. As I say, being surrounded by competitive individuals is not everybody's cup of tea. It's a bit intense at, uh, at times. And uh, we've, we've certainly had some feedback that, uh, um, you know, um, it, sort of in the time that I've been with uh, Wigan Town, which is what, probably 13, 14 years now. Um, it, yeah, the, is that, uh, you know, we, we need to inject more fun. And we've certainly done that over the last, uh, the last few years, but it can be quite, uh, um, yeah, it can be quite difficult being, being around competitive uh, individuals. And certainly like joining Wigan 10 can be a daunting prospect. I know, I mean, we've, everybody who's a member has joined. So we've, we've all uh, been through the, uh, mm, and you, you know, as you say, you know, I think you know, Ricardo mentioned the word feared and that, that automatically puts people off from raising in the, the hand or, or expressing an interest to, to join us um, because it is like, oh, I, you know, this is, it is a daunting uh, prospect. 
Um, but primarily, um, you know, we, we encourage people to, to, uh, to join. We're limited based on our physical size. So we've only have, uh, you know, we can only really house around about 12, 13 members at any, any one time. Um, and it's very important to us that, that they fit in, that the, the culture of the club and the ethos of the club. And because effectively we're, we're, um, we're wanting friends and uh, you know, that's to, to join the party and, and to join and, uh, and, join, and join, join with us. Um, so put a point down, we're, we're very open and honest in our cr critique of each other's work. And again, that's not for everybody. Um, some, if I take some of the, the creative images, uh, typically there's there's a story within the image and typically there's emotion and feelings and the, and the author is, is has put something into that or sees something within that image and it's uh, it's hard if, uh, if if one of us then raises the hand and says i really don't get it i've got no idea what this image is trying to tell me and some you know so it's it, we're we're very open and honest in, in what we see um you know we will say this is really, really good. We'll say that mm, not so sure, and, and we'll point out areas that we feel are ugly. Uh, again, depending on individual's personality, um, that's something people can accept, this uh, sort of con constructive uh, critique. Others uh, can't accept it, and, uh, but you know, that's, that's behind the philosophy of the club, and we certainly warn everybody, this is, this is how we are, and uh, we, you know, we, we say what we see. <laughs> Um, and as a consequence, we do have a turnover of members, just like every other club. It's not, um, you know, it's not that we're uh, a, a, a fixed group and nobody comes in and nobody goes out. Uh, that's not the case. Uh, so Lynn, I think uh, hopefully Lynn will, will, will join. I mean, Lynn um, is our, sort of our, our latest member, but has been a member before. So she took a break and uh, went away and, and has now come back. So, um, yeah, change is good. It keeps us all fresh and gives us some, some new thoughts and uh, new, new ideas. It adds diversity so that we don't become stale and uh, as a group. Um, and yeah, so we sort of typically try and manage it to around about uh, a dozen members. So yeah, in a, in a nutshell, that's uh, that's Wigan Town. That's the philosophy. That's who we are. That's kind of uh, how we operate. And uh, hopefully that's uh, answered some of the questions. But certainly, if you if you something's come to your mind during those uh, those opening words, then yeah, jot it down in in, in the chat, and we'll come back to it in the Q and A session at the, at the end. So, brief history on our uh, our World Cup. I think it's mentioned uh, earlier uh, verbally. So, um, yeah, we've we want to compete with the best in the world, and the best in the world are on this on this call, and and therefore you, you know you are the guys that we want to to compete against you, your clubs, and uh, and, and your members. Uh, and we've embraced this uh, competition ever since uh, Fiat brought the uh, World Cup of of clubs. Uh, we won it in the first time in two thousand and six. Uh, which uh, was just before I joined. Uh, I think um, Marco Potts, who was on this call um, uh, today, he's been a member the longest in in the in this uh, in the Wigan Ten uh, group. So I think he joined around about 2002, if memory serves me right. Uh, so Marco was part of the first uh, World Cup winning uh, side in 2006. Uh, I joined in 2007, and uh, we've got a number of other people on this call that have uh, that have joined uh, since. So we've won it um, uh, on uh, four occasions. We've got the gold uh, gold medal winner also on uh, four occasions. Uh, we've got uh, plenty Morris Dorokin's trophies kicking around uh, uh, amongst us. Uh, so yeah, we won that eight times, so consistently from 2011 through to 2018. And out of the last 15 years, we finished in a top 10 position in 14 out of those 15 years. So, yeah, we, we have a good track record within this competition. We like it. I didn't personally like it when you changed the rules and made it that uh, we could only put two images per, per person. That's challenging for a club that only has 10 members uh, or uh, 12 members. So, um, yeah, that was uh, a challenge. But uh, yeah, I think you can look at the data on the screen. You know, we rose to that challenge, uh, accepted the change and the, and the diversity and uh, uh, and continue to, to, to perform. So that's the wordy bit over over with. I say perhaps uh, store your uh, your questions up. So what follows is uh, we've got a selection of images now from um, pretty much each member. Unfortunately, we don't have Lynn's because uh, Lynn only rejoined last night. Uh, so I put apologies to Lynn that, uh, that that they're not in this presentation, which was prepared uh, before uh, beforehand. Um, so some of the members are on, on this, uh, this link, so they will comment briefly on their own uh, images. Uh, Katie, unfortunately, 
isn't able to join us today so I'll just uh, uh, introduce Katie and uh, um, I can't remember all of the, all of the facts about Katie as to when when she joined she joined after I did so Katie joined maybe 2012 2013 that sort of, uh, of, of timeline um, so I'll show you some of her uh, images and uh, and style um, this one from Katie probably kicked off her um, sort of uh, arrival in the photography. She hadn't been at any other club before or in, in, in any sort of uh, uh, competing capacity uh, when, when she joined uh, Wigan 10. And this, uh, this image kind of, kind of captured um, you know, the attentions and, and has won, I know, a huge number of awards, both nationally and internationally. Um, Katie's images and Katie's work um, they, they represent a period of time in Katie's life or an event in, in, in her life or some feelings or, or there's, there's a very strong connection with Katie's personality and uh, what's in the images. So these, these are Katie's dogs. Um, yeah, they're not, uh, um, yeah, so they're, these are Katie's dogs in this particular uh, uh, image, uh, that's her daughter. Uh, but each of the uh, images, there's, there's a story and there's a connection and it might be a feeling, it might be an emotion, but uh, um, yeah, there's always something there with, uh, with Katie and she, she may not explain it all to you as to what it is because some of it is, uh, is quite person personal. Um, the other thing I would say about Katie, I mean, she, she is a wizard on, on sort of uh, imagery and, and using of, of Photoshop and understanding of, of the skills and, 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 and the software. So that's uh, certainly one way in which she um, makes her images uh, appealing. Um, and I'd say that the second way that, uh, well, for me, this is my interpretation, but the second way is the overall like tonal range and the tonal values that she puts in an image. I mean, typically these are composites, as I'm sure you're all aware. So, um, you know, there's elements in the foreground and there's elements in the, in the background. But whenever I, well, whenever I look at one of Katie's images, I don't see, I never see a tone that's wrong or there's, there's nothing, there's no like, uh, um, there's no sort of orange in here or, or, or purple or something which would stand out and, uh, and jar. And I think that uh, that comes, comes over. She's, she's perfectly willing to break the rules and, you know, cover eyes, uh, et cetera, because it's the, you know, there's, a, it, there's a, this storytelling and, uh, element within her, uh, her images. She'll try a hand at uh, new things as well, and uh, and embrace you know some some humour and uh, and uh, look at uh, other genres, which I think uh, you'll see in, in the images from from the group, um, and and I've certainly noticed it over time. You may be known as a creative photographer, or you might be known as a, a, um, a sports photographer or a nature photographer, uh, but we have a number of members of the club now that come, that sort of join the club with one preferred genre and um, actually also then embrace other genres and take on uh, on different, uh, so you'll see several of the, of the contributors today will show you nature images, creative images, uh, sports images and, uh, uh, and the like, whereas as they didn't join the club necessarily with that uh, broad uh, portfolio of, uh, of images. <clears throat> so again, here a classic uh, KT. There's a, you know, some of the storytelling element. Uh, so no, no, no tones jar anywhere. Um, uh, so yeah, this is this is how I uh, I see KT's uh, uh, images. Okay, so I think that's the uh, the last one of, of KT's, if memory serves uh, me right. Um, so next up is uh, is Mandy. Mandy is on the call, so Mandy, if you're able to uh, unmute your microphone, if you, I'll, I'll be pressing the buttons for you. But if you'd like to unmute and uh, and talk us through some of your images, please. Hello, everybody. Yeah, um, as you can see on the screen, I do portraiture, not necessarily classic portraiture, but I like to add something slightly different. Um, so I'm a fan of costume. You'll notice all of these are quite heavily styled um, and I'm quite happy to manipulate images to get across what it is I'm trying to say. Uh, I'm inspired from lots of different places. It could be something as simple as a prop, which for the clown image, that one, um, it, that came from the wig, which is on a mannequin in a shop window. And I just asked, the lady behind the desk that when they'd finished with it could I have it and I've used it loads it's it just inspires me that <laughs> it's a silly thing but it's it's 
I see it in lots of different ways. I think I've got some more behind this, Amanda, if you want me to, yeah, if I can click onto the bigger image, if you want. Yeah, so this one, um, I just had in mind that I wanted to do sort of a clown image, but the, not the usual happy jolly clown, maybe somebody who is just feeling a bit strange and a bit off kilter. And it's everything I do, I tend to do very cheaply in uh, the back room of my house. So I would say that entire picture there cost, I don't know, maybe five pounds, something like that to set up and take. Uh, I, I obviously set up on my own lighting and uh, the people that I, I work with, we collaborate usually. So the models are working just for the photographs. Um, and in this instance, Elise, the girl in the picture, she's actually um, a spoken word poet. And I like to work with people that can portray emotion in, in my pictures. And I just said to her, you know, uh, be depressed. <laughs> Show me how you would feel as a clown if things were just a little bit off kilter and, and she sat on the floor and, and I went low and wide because I didn't have big shoes but I just wanted her feet to be quite prominent and, and lead into the image. Uh, yep, so that's that one. Thanks very much, Austin. Um, these two, the one on the left is Lauren. Um, it's a composite. She was in the middle of a forest in Wales, but that tree, I think in the background from Sri Lanka uh, and it was just a sit and doodle day and, and see what came out of it and I, I just quite like the way it all fell together for me. Um, my images either come very quickly, I think both of these took about five minutes each to put together and that's great. I can sit for hours and hours on something and then just abandon it. So it's kind of an emotional thing for me. I think you've got to you've got to sit and and be there for when these images want to come. Uh, and it's the same for the one on the right. I I knew I was going to take a picture of Pip actually walking with his case and his his walking stick. And but I didn't have a clue where it was going to go. And then I just sat down one afternoon and and started looking through some old snaps that I had from holidays and the staircases from a holiday in Greece. Uh, the clock image I can't even remember where I got that one, but it's probably from one of my trips abroad somewhere. And um, that one again, it just it came together in about five minutes, but sometimes they don't. So I'm grateful when they do. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's very much about flow and how I feel at the time. Um, these two are obviously a little bit surreal. Um, the girl on the left, that's Lauren. And I've been watching um, an Australian drama at the time that had quite a school mommy person. And I wanted to base it, a, a, a portrait on, on her. Um, so that's where she came from. That's called Dark Secret. She was quite a secretive character in, in the show. Um, and that's been quite heavily manipulated, obviously. But uh, I quite enjoy these, these style of portraits, the manipulated ones. Um, again, set up in a back room, very simple lighting set up I just I tend to work on my own because it's quite small and um, the one on the right that young lady is Silk again these girls are friends so it's all done collaboratively um, and I tend to like if I get something like this that I like I tend to print it and send it to them because not many people print nowadays and I, I do think it's nice to have something that you've created to be able to everybody's into digital everybody sees everything online but it's nice to have something in a frame on your wall. And I think these are just different than what these girls would normally get from other photographers. Um, so yeah, that's those, thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah, Mandy, thank you very much in, indeed. Um, Eddie is uh, is also on the call. Eddie, same process. If, if Mandy can mute and, and Eddie can unmute, would you like to talk us through some of yours, Eddie? I don't think Eddie's on the call, um, Austin. Ah, okay. My apologies. Sorry, I, I thought I'd uh, I thought I'd seen Eddie in, in the list. Okay, Eddie's um, yeah joined us a couple of years ago now, maybe maybe three years ago. Time flies. I've forgotten about 2020. I've just sort of written that one off. Yeah, about three years he's uh, he's been been with us. Um, and I mentioned earlier the the, the uh, different sort of genres. 
so uh, Eddie certainly is, is a number of images like similar to the one on the left. Uh, we have um, you know, these sort of uh, creative and, and old world and possibly, you know, quite uh, sort of uh, British, uh, Victorian, uh, Edwardian, Georgian type images, which uh, are, are popular. Um, but uh, Eddie's also um, done a lot more sports photography uh, recently. He's now uh, we, he's uh, we are sort of working with one of his uh, local football uh, clubs as their kind of a, a official photographer, which wasn't something he was doing when he joined uh, Wigan Town, but it's something that he's gone into when he's seen uh, some other images and, uh, and they've sort of inspired him with, with some of the images that he's seen with with us, and uh, has yeah got himself more involved in uh, in the sports photography uh, side of things. Yeah, this is another uh, sort of um, uh, these uh, actors and actresses that like to uh, to dress up and uh, reenact uh, certain things, and uh, and had, had uh, puts them together and uh, and you know, create sort of a storytelling image out of these uh, people. Again, same uh, same same type of thing. We um, <clears throat> yeah, so we have, we have a few of these sort of uh, creative areas or. or, or um, uh, places which would sort of take you back in time um, so you can see these people um, dressed up in, in costumes at various times of, of the year um, they're not always perfectly posed for, for photographs that's part of the art of the photographer and what Ed, Eddie gets out of it um, but at, um, but yeah this is a, a classic image from uh, from Eddie um, again, broadening the uh, uh, broadening his skills. He was I don't think he'd taken nature pictures before he, he joined us, but um, I think he took this with all the members of Wigan Town. So there was a few a uh, few of the club uh, all went into in, into the same area. This one was taken from a hide, and um, yeah, so he's uh, he's worked with other members to to also do some nature photography. So um, that was uh, was Eddie. Um, is Janie on the call? No, she's she's not no. available today, Austin. Okay, no, no problem. Uh, so yeah, Jane, uh, Jenny Lazenby, I, I would say that she was our latest member, but I say somebody, uh, Lynn, Lynn rejoined us uh, last night, uh, ironically. So um, so yeah, Janie is our, our sort of our latest uh, member uh, prior to uh, uh, last e evening. Um, and again, you'll see her, her style and, and there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of horses and uh, uh, because that's uh, one of her passion and, uh, and personal uh, uh, hobbies. Um, so yeah, Jane uh, brings a uh, different sort of uh, genre. Uh, so uh, that we don't have, uh, but the horses that we have in our, in our portfolio and in our, our club's images right now are normally um, uh, sort of uh, running and jump, jumping over fences and uh, as in competitive, but these are very much uh, um, you know, very well trained and uh, incredibly obedient uh, horses. And uh, Jane's uh, sort of style and uh, access to sort of models, et cetera, allows her to create these, uh, these type of, uh, of images. I think, it, I think it's e easy for Jane. You can see when uh, when she talks about her images and, and when she's putting these, these together. Th this comes from a passion. You know, this this comes from a, a life of uh, uh, of sort of being with or or around uh, horses. Um, so this isn't this isn't work. This is uh, this is something that she she loves uh, from her heart, and it's it's part of uh, uh, of her. her something that's, it's not difficult for her. But again, you know, there's uh, the creativity is there. The uh, using uh, um, uh, uh, skills. Uh, she's an extremely competent uh, uh, photographer. Uh, incredibly busy. She's one of the members that's uh, right now is incredibly active doing Zoom meetings um, uh, for other club members to 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 learn. And, and uh, so she uh, shares her skills and, uh, and methods, etc., via um, uh, sort of these on online uh, learning uh, capability that we've got at the moment. Um, so yeah, she's uh, um, um, sharing her, her knowledge as well as uh, using it for her own images. Uh, but yeah, her first love is definitely horses, and uh, uh, this is a stunt rider. Um, she tells me that this, I mean, the horse is clearly moving at speed and he's in quite an un uncomfortable old position and tells me that this is not uh, not something that everybody does or can do, <laughs> never mind uh, photograph. Um, so yeah, great uh, to have uh, Jane as, uh, as part of the group. Okay, this is my little section. Um, so um, yeah, I'll I'll go through these at uh, a reasonable speed. And, um, so yeah, I, I joined Wigan Town. Um, well, my images were rubbish. I think I said at the beginning it's it's a daunting prospect when you join Wigan Town. And Marco, who's on this call, who was who was the member who was there before me, um, I still have the folder of images that I um, 
uh, you know, shared with Wigan Town when I went to introduce myself and say, oh, this, this is who I am and this is the kind of picture that I've, I've taken. And I look at that fold today and I just, I, I cringe. I'm almost crying. <laughs> the images were awful, absolutely awful. And what they saw in me at that time, I have no idea. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it well, you, it, it's energy, yeah. They saw passion, they saw an interest, enthusiasm, a willingness to learn, that that kind of thing, and that uh, that I think uh, flows. So I joined uh, with uh, primarily um, following uh, nature uh, photography and, and bird photography, and with Colin Smith, who was a member at the time, helped me immensely in terms of understanding what makes a good nature image and what makes uh, you know, an ordinary uh, nature image. So this one was, um, you know, after this, this, this one did take several years. I know it sounds like a cliche and every photographer says, oh, I, I've taken half my life to get this picture. Well, these, these birds, um, you know, they nest quite locally uh, to me. Um, but the, the opportunity to get a photograph of a baby grebe with, a, with an adult grebe, you've got maybe one or two days in a year. And that's uh, only on the year when they're successful to breed, only on the year when the nest that they construct is close enough to the bank uh, for you to be able to get close enough to the, to the bird to get a, a full frame. So, um, yeah, this took, uh, took some time to get, but uh, I, it's one of those cases where I got my almost my entire collection of grieve images on, on one afternoon. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, those, uh, those are those. Um, what else do I do? Uh, Africa. I uh, go, go to Africa as many times as I possibly can. Uh, I think I'm, I've definitely got Africa disease so after the first time that, uh, that I went. Um, and yeah, I'm on a, well, I've actually on three occasions now. I've, I've managed to see six cheetah cubs, which is um, which is not um, not normal. <laughs> the, the, the cheetahs are are um, are kept. Um, the, the female cheetah will look after these cubs, and she just physically can't keep six of them uh, together and uh, safely from from prey. She has to go off the hunt and leaves these poor vulnerable uh, cubs uh, around. And this is one of such occasions. So the cubs were basically told stay here. Uh, she went off to hunt and uh, the one calling is basically calling mum, it's, it's, it's yelping because it uh, doesn't feel so comfortable that uh, mum's not around. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's another genre that, uh, that I offer. Um, as I said, I joined Wigan Town just after they were World Cup uh, champions and um, which was, and my pictures were rubbish. So that was the, the background and uh, and then uh, so I'm thinking, well, Austin, what, what are you going to do here? Yeah, you know, you're surrounded by brilliant sports photographers, brilliant nature photographers, brilliant creative photographers. What on earth can you offer to this uh, to this group? And then I looked around and thought, well, actually, I'm, I wasn't quite the youngest. I was the second youngest, but I think I'm a lot younger than, than these people. And I don't think any of them ski. So I then decided, OK, I can I can ski. I can use a camera. I'm going to take some pictures of skiers because I thought it's high impact. It's action. It's uh, these are all the things that uh, I'm, I'm hearing all of these words at Wigan Ten as to uh, when I joined. Uh, yes, but I set about uh, trying to get to coincide my personal you know, my annual uh, skiing trip somewhere for my own personal uh, pleasure and leisure time with uh, when there's some sort of competition on from a, a skiing uh, event. Uh, and then with the skills that I'd learned about, OK, well, you're going to get far more impact if you get this on a darker background than on a, on a white sky that's full of uh, that's full of snow. because you, you kind of uh, lose uh, some of the impact and need to get down uh, low. And obviously, as a skier, I was able to ski to you know, particular corners. I was able to go by like, basically ski the course once uh, to pick my slot and decide where's the best background, where's the best light direction, where's the best best angle. Uh, and then I'd ski the slope again to get to that position, dig myself in and uh, and take these kind of images so yeah i was able to with with finding a niche even within a small club just to get my foot in and and, and offer some images that uh, uh, that would uh, were suitable for the um uh, for, for the club at that uh, that time i'll skip that one because i've uh, commented yeah some uh, another africa one some of these images are in because they were images that were used in the successful uh, gb uh, the successful world uh, clubs uh, cup uh, over the last uh, 10 years so uh, these are now not necessarily my best images but they're images that were used in the uh, the world clubs uh, cup um i then went on to to uh, sort of 
you know, using this low profile and, and sort of action and high impact uh, words that, which the club had taught me, um, I thought, okay, I need to try and show birds then in a slightly different way. So instead of showing a bird on a stick, which was what everybody was doing and what I was trying to, to emulate in, in sort of 2008, it was, okay, Austin, you've got to get something better that's, uh, that adds impact and, and is, does something. And these kind of like, this sort of kind of put my name on the stand. This became like my style and, my, and uh, 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 instantly recognised uh, uh, as a uh, one of my images and um, yeah so I had great great fun I'm surrounded by these birds fortunately where I live there's uh, pretty much every farm building within uh, what, five miles of me has a family of these or or, uh, um, or whatever so uh, yeah so that's, that's kind of how I got my trademark uh, which I yeah which I use um, and again same same idea behind it so just uh, you know impact really strong eye contact and eye shape and that's uh, uh, to try and lift my uh, my bird photography to a, a slightly uh, better level instead of it just being a, a bird perched on a stick again typical for the for the time period this was one that did get an award at uh, at the uh, at the fiat world cup and i think it's 2014 2015 uh, kind of uh, time frame um, yeah, and as I say, this is all, all part of the journey of making my bird photography uh, better. Uh, this was another one that took quite some time. Um, you, uh, there's, there's always an element in nature that's going against me. Uh, so birds fly into the wind. So uh, for this particular frame, I needed to have the wind uh, coming from the left of the screen as I'm looking at it towards the, uh, uh, towards the right so that the bird on the right was therefore flying in, in that direction. Uh, I needed the light to, to the nat natural light and I needed some sort of reflector or something to or a flash to, to add a little bit of uh, a fill in detail. So it got, got quite complicated. I'm, I'm an engineer by trade. Uh, so you know, combining and coming up with engineering solutions or technical solutions solutions to complement the, um, uh, the sort of photographic work uh, became part and parcel of, of, of photography to me. And this is, these are some of my, uh, my latest uh, uh, images. So that's a, uh, a leopard cub uh, that was actually only taken about three months ago in, um, in Kenya. Um, this is one which I'm, I'm pursuing a lot more now. So these are a mountain gorilla, a baby mountain gorilla taken in, in Rwanda. Um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm doing more and more images of, of the gorillas. It's uh, it's not easy place to get to. It's I think there's uh, you need to be physically fit to get there. As a, you can trek for well, four to six hours until you find these gorillas, um, and then you get precisely sixty minutes with them. Uh, for fifteen hundred dollars, uh, so you use every single minute wisely. <laughs> you, that is not the time to be working out how uh, you know, how how exposure compensation works in your camera, or how to switch between manual ISO and uh, uh, and uh, an auto ISO or anything else. Your, your sixty minutes, are, are, are sixty expensive minutes, are ticking. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to put together a study of uh, of mountain gorillas, and um, it's just as a, a personal uh, a personal project. Um, and where am I going? So I think um, my bird photography, I, I have to say, I feel like I've taken it now to a level where I'm not sure how I might be able to squeeze three or four percent more out of my images, but I'm not really too, I, I don't see a way of getting a 50 percent improvement in, in my images. So uh, again, I did what I did when I joined Wigan 10 and thought, well, what, what else can I do that, you know, perhaps not everybody else is doing? Um, and I came up with the idea that I'd learn to dive and I would go, um, I'd, I'd learn how to dive and, and get take up underwater photography. So and I now intend to spend the vast majority of my uh, photography hey, once I can travel again underwater and um, taking pictures like this. So that's the end of, uh, of, of my uh, section. Uh, Paul is on the line. I've seen Paul. So Paul, would you... Uh, Care to unmute your sure. microphone, please, yeah. and uh, talk us through. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, we can. My, um, yeah, Paul Statter. Uh, my two, I joined Wigan 10 in 2016. Um, my two main genres are street photography and creative photography. But this one's a travel shot. <laughs> but I think we put this one in, it was quite successful in the, uh, in the British PDI championships uh, it uh, I think it won best image <clears throat> this is an image um, taken in Cambodia called Cambodian classroom my daughter lives in Cambodia she teaches there and uh, <clears throat> when I was over there she took me out into the provinces 
uh, very, very poor in some of these villages. Um, that some villages don't even have running water, but they do have a school. And um, it's interesting because one of the main sort of, well, the main job that everyone aspires to in Cambodia is to be a, a, a travel guide and uh, not a doctor, a travel guide. And uh, quite a few um, people have made successful career as a travel guide, they go back to the village in Cambodia and they'll build a school. And this is actually one of the schools. So I was just lucky with this shot. I um, think possibly my street photography techniques paid off here because it was more of a grab shot really, but uh, I was lucky there because they were all looking towards me. So, uh, so that's Cambodian classroom. Yeah, onto the creative uh, genre. Uh, the photograph on the left is called Freedom, <clears throat> and the one on the right is um, is um, Raven Queen. <clears throat> Both of these have been in the World Cup. Um, in fact, the one on the right, Raven Queen, did very well. It uh, it won a Selectors Judges Award. Um, yeah, uh, as Austin and some of the other members were saying, I think probably to stand out as a creative photography, you, you need to do something different, I think. And uh, you can see from the Raven Queen there, uh, we've got lots of lots of movement um, in, in the image. Um, my creative images, I tried to make them sort of photorealistic. Um, so they look kind of real, but, but they're not real. Uh, the story, the one on the left, Freedom, um, <clears throat> Bit of a story to that. This was a young girl I photographed in Spain. Um, very talented uh, gymnast who became a dancer. She's now in the Berlin School of Ballet. She was only 12 at the time when we took this one. Um, but there's quite a story to, to freedom. Um, it's just, really the message there is no matter how high you aim, you're still shackled by something, possibly yourself. So. The ballet dancers up there on the top of the mountain, uh, beyond the clouds, and uh, she's still shuttled. Uh, uh, she's not quite got free. Okay, thanks. This one's called Petals in the Wind. Um, again, <clears throat> trying to create something different. Uh, I shot the model on a, a photo shoot and um, got her to move her dress so that I could actually add the petals later on and um, make it more dramatic. And I think with creative photography, it's um, it's got to grab you straight away. There's got to be a backline story as well. So that one's called Petals in the Wind. So on to my other genre, uh, street photography. Um, <clears throat> I kind of started uh, a lot of my photography uh, on film. Um, and I've always been interested in street photography um, and it's quite challenging. Um, and believe it or not, it's open to everyone. So I, I try and promote wherever possible, I try and promote street photography. And um, this is an image called, um, what's it called? Secret Liaison. <clears throat> it's done particularly well in competitions. And believe it or not, a lot of people who see this image say, <clears throat> how did you set that one up? Well, I didn't set it up. I was walking the back streets of Manchester, my local city, and I just came across, across this, uh, this little cafe where there was two characters sat outside and I was quite lucky because there's a, a very fancy car parked around the corner. So I, I just took this image. Um, <clears throat> And I call it secret liaison. Now, whether or not the two couple, the couple that are associated to the the Bentley parked up the street, I just don't know. But <laughs> maybe they are, maybe they're not. But it made for a good image. Um, it's been quite successful that one. Yeah. This is a crossover. It's um, it's a street photograph, but it's kind of a, a composite as well. So what I've done there is uh, this character is is a guy that was living on the street. Uh, I did a, a series of street photographs of people living out on the street and uh, 
when I'm going round, uh, I don't generally give the people money, but they are, they have a very tough time on the streets. This was taken in Manchester again. This guy was was living. In fact, um, the body which is actually up the street, uh, that's him as well. He's he, he's sleeping out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, he he was quite an interesting character. Quite happy for me for for me to take his image, and uh, I created. Uh, this um, this composite from it, so uh, quite an interesting shot, really. Um, and that's again taken in in Manchester. This one, <clears throat> going back to composites and uh, photorealistic imagery, this is called Spirit of the Dancer. Um, the dancers from the Northern School of Ballet. Uh, I did quite a few uh, shots with the Northern School of Ballet, and um, this. This image was kind of <clears throat> taken with some fabric wrap round it. And uh, I wanted to sort of create something different with it. So I I thought, well, what's going, what's going through her mind when she's actually doing this pose? And uh, maybe she's thinking about music or freedom. So sort of created the the sense that she was actually in a museum or, or something like that with musicians on the wall sort of playing to her. So yeah, Spirit of the Dancer is, um, that was quite successful in the World Cup a few years back. Okay. Back to the street images again. Um, this, this one is again shot in the, the streets of Manchester. Um, I, um, <clears throat> I did a, a series of people in the street uh, who, who were sleeping out. Um, as I said, they do have a rough time. In fact, someone yesterday died uh, on the streets of Manchester and it's not surprising with the temperatures. Um, yeah, street photography is all about sort of seeing things, I think. And in this image, um, <clears throat> I saw the poster, uh, which was on a revolving uh, sort of, you know, these revolving posters. And I saw the storm uh, advert for a, a cinema. So I thought, right, <clears throat> um, I'll get down. It's taken very low to the ground um, and wait for the right person to walk past and get the, get the people sleeping in the streets between a passerby I think it's a, a very strong story there, so that's good. Um, this one was in the this year's World, World Cup. Um, it's called The Gift. I uh, started to do a series of creative images involving, um, involving birds. Um, so I'd done some photography uh, up in Scotland of uh, kingfishers and uh, I thought it'd be quite nice to combine that with um, with uh, some of the models that I'd shot. Um, so it's kind of you know when a when a kingfisher dives and comes back out again, it's quite magical, really. So I sort of brought that together with a with a theme there. So yeah, that's called the gift. Um, this one's called the Huntress. Uh, it's done very well in fiat competitions, won a lot of gold medals. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, we have a lot of um, people who dress up at different uh, conventions and it's a good ground to, to get different sorts of characters. And when I was at, at Lincoln, uh, one of the festivals, um, this girl came along and she made a lot of effort. She was from Italy, actually. She made a lot of efforts with her costume, so I, I, I took a photograph of her and uh, thought about what can, I, what can I do with it? So I ended up putting it on a desert island and calling it the Huntress. Uh, the, the ship was from Denmark. I was traveling and saw this sort of mastered ship and I thought, well, I'll, I'll make it look like she's just landed on this desert island and uh, she's gonna conquer the, conquer the island. So she was called the Huntress. This, another one that did particularly well in this year's World Cup. Um, this one's called Trying to Let Go. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of a, 
another one involving um, some goldfinches actually I shot and uh, combined with a, a model again <clears throat> trying to create something a little bit different um, showing the flowing movement so it's not a static image but uh, a, ve a very simple image uh, trying to let go. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate uh, that. So same uh, procedure. Marco, I know you're on, on the call. Would you be uh, willing to talk us through your images, please, and on mute? Yeah, it's OK. Thank you. Hello to everyone. Um, my photography is a bit uh, dated. I joined uh, uh, Wigan 10 uh, in uh, uh, 2003. And uh, let's say uh, photography has always been a bit of a compromise with my work, which did not let me have much of it free time. So um, it started mainly on trips and uh, uh, joined it with work. It was quite often trips abroad and uh, going around and seeing uh, uh, people from different uh, ethnic group, uh, culture, religions, social uh, background uh, and been uh, particularly focused on working with people and on people uh, I, I develop a, a strong interest in in portrait and uh, uh, traveling it was uh, at the beginning like the interest into the diversity but uh, with time uh, uh, the interest has shifted from the diversity in clothes um, and um, jewelry and uh, attitude and so on. So the, the focus shifted from the diversity to something which I could find uh, into every human being. Some uh, fundamental feelings uh, which were uh, common to everyone. And so uh, the shift went from diversity into a human factor what was common to everyone and and that became uh, the, the kind of main interest of the, the photography so uh, you could find uh, sadness happiness uh, love for the child and uh, religious feeling which were deeply rooted into everyone you can find within the diversity uh, this was uh, uh, one of the photographs taken in uh, India. India has been the main ground for my photography. And in particular, this was taken in, uh, in Varanasi. Uh, and it was in the courtyard. Uh, and uh, it is a photograph which was actually presented uh, uh, in the first uh, World Cup in 2006, which uh, we won with Wigan 10. And, and it's actually we won, but got a silver medal, but um, is a photograph which I tend to use uh, uh, quite often in a presentation uh, because uh, I like to show the, the situation as it was. So we have three uh, ladies uh, sitting in the courtyard and, uh, and this is just a detail of one of them. And I like just to say that each of us will have a different view of the situation. And this was my view of a situation. Thanks. Next one. Okay, can we go on to the next one, Austin? Yeah, well, which one are you seeing, Mark? I've, I've uh, the, the, the priest uh, uh, in Baranasi. No, that's fine. We can go to the previous one. Uh, here we are again uh, in, uh, in uh, Baranasi the gas, which is the uh, clue, the, the key point uh, in, in this uh, place. Uh, no, it's moved to the next one, Austin. And nothing's changed on my screen, Mark. I don't know. I'm, on mine, there is, a, there is a lady. I don't know which, what is on everyone's screen. I think there might be a delay, Austin. Uh, if Marco is yeah. joining us from Italy, there might be a delay on the line. So right now I'm seeing the gentleman in Varanasi on the gas. Yeah, yeah that's correct. Okay. 
this was a, a priest praying along the Ghats, and on the Ghats is where um, uh, a lot of the life uh, in Varanasi is uh, is developing. Is where people would go to to bath, uh, to clean themselves, uh, and to clean their uh, their soul. And is a place with uh, the um, uh, where they do. Uh, of the um, burning of the dead bodies. Uh, and uh, uh, that is a very important moment for the Hindu religion. And that was a trip mainly devoted to expression of uh, faith within the Hindu religion, um, which is something I, I find very fascinating because basically I see the same religious passion I see in other parts, just with a different way of expressing themselves. Okay, we can move to the lady. Okay, this uh, is a is a lady which I, I photograph in Haridwar, which is another holy place for Hindu people in in India. Uh, the lady is actually from Rajasthan, which is from the other side of India, and she was in Haridwar with members of a village in pilgrimage because to uh, bath himself in the Ganges River in, in uh, Haridwar is also very important spiritually and it's meant to clean uh, uh, your soul. And uh, uh, I was fascinated by uh, this group of people. And, uh, and again, uh, that was uh, a situation in which um, the interest was there, but the condition at the moment were impossible. It was something like 11 in the morning uh, in an open place uh, with uh, thousands of people and very harsh light. So uh, I always uh, go around with uh, a, some interpreter to uh, allow me to communicate with the people because I always ask permission to uh, before I take a photograph and I always try to understand something and know something about the people I, I take photograph of. Uh, so through my interpreter, we managed to uh, discover that we were living in a hotel in another part of town and that they were going to the hotel in the afternoon. So that what we did. We, we went to meet these people and we went through the procedure, asking the permission to the head of the village and then to the lady herself. And then finally, I managed to take this uh, photograph, which um, at the time uh, has been particularly appreciated in, uh, in competition. Um, I'm not sure today probably will be as successful, but uh, it's certainly one of the pictures I particularly like myself. Next one. Okay. Uh, this uh, is, uh, is another uh, photograph uh, taken in, uh, in Varanasi. We are actually uh, a bit uh, inland, uh, away from uh, the river, and we are uh, in, a, in a temple. Uh, this mother is waiting to put the child through a ceremony. It's called the shaving ceremony, and it's like the introduction to the Hinduism, a bit like a baptism for a, a, a Catholic uh, uh, person. Um, the child is kept with the hair growing until such a day when they do this ceremony and the ceremony is shaved. But um, apart from the uh, beauty of the mother and of the child, I was fascinated by the the feeling that was coming through to me from this uh, uh, picture. And uh, I like to see the arm of the mother that's supporting uh, and, and kind of protecting the child. And uh, the right hand of the mother, which is very tenderly uh, touching the feet of the child uh, as to kind of uh, convey to the child a sense of mommy's here and you don't need to, to worry. And uh, these are uh, 
a photograph which in different shapes are replicated in different parts of the world so with different religion, different group. And I think it's one of the best example of what I like to call the human factor or mean common denominator of human beings. And, and beyond the aesthetic of the photograph is one of the things that uh, I aim at with my photography. And probably this was the last one, wasn't it, Austin? Yes, thank you, Marco. Appreciate that. Okay, I think we've got around about 15 minutes left, if that serves me right, Paul. That would be correct. Yes, Austin. Yeah. Okay, so just, just a note to Phil and, uh, and Robert. Uh, so, Phil, if you're on the call, can you yeah. talk us through yours? Thank you. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Um, I joined Wigan 10 in 2014. Um, I originally joined as a creative photographer, um, but other members started taking me or showing me different sporting events and showing me how to do nature photography. So I started doing all aspects of photography um, because of, for competitions, especially something like the World Cup, we need a good diverse set of images, um, not just creative. Um, this first picture was lucky enough to win the best picture. I think it was 2017 World Cup. Um, it's called Committed. Uh, I like doing my sports photography and to get to an event like this, you usually apply for a press pass. Um, this is in Manchester, uh, the squash arena. Um, the players are the best in the world who are usually playing. Uh, it's like a diamond league type event where they're playing for top cash and all the best players are there in the world. Um, with the press pass, we're right at the back of the court and, and the court is like um, a one-way vision where they can't see us and we've got a little box at the back what we're shooting through. Um, usually very poor lighting conditions, so I'm shooting about three and a half thousand ISO on this, um, trying to a shutter speed of over a thousandth of a second, um, usually aperture of 2.8. Um, like I said, that was lucky enough to get the best picture in, I think it was 2017. Um, this is my dog, Henry, um, is a Newfoundland water dog. Uh, I used to do a lot of water rescue with my dogs. I used to be an instructor um, and a judge at water rescue. And every weekend I would be up to my neck in water uh, with the dogs swimming out to us and retrieving us. Um, and I thought what a fantastic picture it would be to capture something like that. So I've used my own artistic license um, to imagine what it would be like with the dog swimming underwater. Um, Cause I've not got, not got underwater housing for my camera. Um, I know Austin's got one now, which he said he could help me do some proper underwater pictures. Um, I certainly will. <laughs> this has been quite successful in lots of competitions and won lots of gold medals. Um, again, next one. A uh, creative picture. Um, most of these pictures, what you're seeing now, are have actually been in the World Cup. Um, so they're not necessarily my best pictures, but they're just some of the pictures what I've been in the World Cup. But they don't necessarily do very well that well. Um, overly creative pictures in the World Cup, I've noticed. But the competitions in uh, international competitions in Britain tend to do quite well this kind of stuff. Um, I like doing my nature shots, so I've got pictures of squirrels and birds. So I thought I'd make a funny picture out of it where the grey squirrels are playing the red squirrels at cards, um, and it's called playing for nuts. Um, Another sports image. Um, I like going to these events. It's mixed martial arts or cage fighting. Again, this has been in the World Cup. I think it did quite well in the World Cup. Um, I don't think it won an award, but it got a high-ish mark. Again, shooting at 
very poor lighting conditions. So he's shooting at ISOs of about 10,000, um, shooting at fast shutter speed again, over a thousand, so you can get the, the, the spray of sweat and blood coming out of the mouth and stuff like that. So that to go to some of these events, oh, sorry. Another squash one. Um, this this won an award as one of the World Cups, I think. I think it, I don't know if it won a selectors or a commended or a highly commended. Again, another squash picture. This guy was one of the best. I think he was best in the world, if not still best in the world. Egyptian guy. Um, but that's he's with he's right up close and personal there when I'm taking the shot um, through the one way vision. Again, another, it's a portrait of a, a cage fighter this time. I, I used to photograph a lot of these guys training. Um, this guy was the world champion. Uh, they have, it's like boxing, they have lots of different belts, what they compete for. So there's lots of different world champions. But this guy, I just asked him, could I take his portrait? Next minute he whips his shirt off and he's doing all this boxing, strutting about for me. Um, which he liked the shots and eventually they used the pictures um, for his sponsorship. He was sponsored by a supplements company um, and they eventually used the pictures. I think that's been used in the World Cup as well. Um, this is this is my bread and butter stuff, really, the creative stuff, what I do. Um, I like going to cosplay events um, and uh, I'm influenced by film posters with my work, what, I'm, what I do. Um, the background is at, in Manchester at Salford Keys next to Man United ground. Because um, I hadn't got a picture of Gotham or anything like that. I took pictures of Salford Keys and I've added Gotham signs to it. The bike I've actually constructed myself. Um, I had a model of bat, the Bat bike and I've actually used artistic license to create the image myself. Like the, the tires on it is my van tire, which I drive. Um, the, the picture of him holding the gun, he was actually doing a selfie with somebody, he had his arm around somebody. Um, so I took his arm off, put another arm on. You got a picture of a, a gun, which you get lots of pictures of guns at these cosplay events. And I, I made it into a Batman firing a gun. That's one's called um, Dark Knight in Gotham. Um, another one, I love my dogs again. And it's it's uh, influenced by, I think it's Cassius Marcellus Coolidge, I think his name is, a famous, well, he's probably not that famous, but he, he he's, he's done uh, paintings of dogs playing pool, snooker, um, playing cards. And that's influenced me to create this picture. The pictures of each dog um, is taken at Crufts. I go to Crufts every year to watch the Newfoundlands. Um, and they have a section at Crufts called uh, Discover Dogs. And you can get every breed of dog there. So I've basically taken pictures of the dogs, which I wanted in the picture, which is virtually exactly the same of this other guy. Uh, other guys painting, I wanted to recreate it. It's done very well, won quite a few awards. So, um, more sports pitches, athletics. Um, I said, I, I like to do a, a good diverse set of images. I, I, I love sports, I love uh, creating, and I love nature. I mean, when I enter the, the FIAP competitions, I always want to try and go to win the best author or the blue badge when I'm a, when I'm actually entering this. So it's good to have a good mixture of work to win these awards. This is, again, this is in Manchester, shot with a, th a 300 prime lens. Um, and you can get right at the back. You get up and close and personal where you get the press pass for these events. Um, nature. This is, I don't have the money to go to travel into Africa and all these fancy places. So this is taking me back garden. Um, I do have a, a few setups in my back garden. Um, and every year this, around about May, June time, the juvenile starlings come out. 
um, put food out for them and I get them into a frenzy and they start fighting for the food. Uh, again, the, the nature, I didn't really do much nature till I joined Wigan 10. Um, and now it's my favorite, favorite part of photography, I would say nature. Uh, it's the thing I do the most now, especially in lockdown. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Phil. Sorry for rushing you a little bit there. Oh, just we, we've got uh, four minutes left for three, <laughs> three more members. So, yeah, if the, th the remaining uh, team can perhaps sort of quickly uh, go through their images. So, over to you, Nick, if uh, you're on the call. Nick's not on the call, Austin. Okay, I'll uh, uh, introduce uh, Nick then. So I think uh, if I use this main main capture, it's uh, so again similar um, uh, comments. Nick's images definitely are, are a strong storytelling uh, images. Uh, he spends a lot of time sort of um, either in his mind or, or you know, sort of creating them and getting the the, the pictures. So they've got a huge story. He, he explains to us uh, what. what uh, you know, what's behind it and what the what the message is and this is perhaps an example of where I said uh, right at the beginning um, you know somebody looking at that might not instantly get it and, and the first version of this image you know was perhaps you know, it was confusing it, it made total sense to Nick but uh, we didn't it wasn't clear and, uh, and simple for, for myself uh, as an example um, so yeah this uh, would be an, ex an example of a very very strong connection to the image and sometimes we, we look to try and simplify things a bit and again, so much detail. There's so much storytelling in the in this from uh, various uh, uh, creation. Uh, so that's another one. Again, saying the way that Nick's mind works is very. There's a lot of thought goes into his uh, images, and it's it's. This is not just a random collection of items. It uh, it makes a lot of uh, makes a lot of sense when you read through the through the image. Again, another one. Um, just uh, some deep thoughts, and uh, but combined with a with a humour element, and um, yeah. So there's a point. not not that it's particularly funny what the gentleman's doing. Let me just make sure make that clear. But uh, uh, but yeah, just the fact that it, it's uh, in some way it, it's uh, it's humorous. Uh, and again, you know, another uh, deep uh, storytelling image. You might recognise the gentleman uh, uh, in the background. I can't remember his name actually. And sadly, he's uh, no longer with us. But he's uh, he is the same uh, um, person that was jumping over the uh, gymnastics bench in in KT's uh, World Champion uh, uh, image. So yeah, we uh, we use the same uh, characters. Now, Jeremy, you are on the call, so I'll uh, uh, mute my microphone and pass on on to Jeremy. And he'll talk us through uh, uh, briefly, Jeremy. If, <laughs> Apologies for that. Um, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Um, so um, I'm primarily a nature photographer. I, I joined Wigan 10 on the strength of my nature photography. I've been interested in nature for since I was a teenager, watching David Attenborough and, and other such, such programmes. This, this image, the fox with egg, uh, was recently in the World Cup. Um, and was successful. Um, it, it, the fox is local. It, um, um, it was. Um, it, it lives in the bushes just behind. And, and with the 400, 400 mil, um, I was able to capture this relatively easily. Okay. Well, given I'm on um, limited time, I'll move on. Um, so the the otter here. Um, this was taken on Mull, which is in northern Scotland, and Britain was um, suffering heavy blizzards at the time. The, um, uh, but because Mull is in the Gulf Stream and it, it's relatively warmer than the rest of Britain, um, the, the otter came ashore just in front of me. I, I took this with a, with a 500 and a 1.4 um, extender, and um, the, the otter was... Um, very very close it, it was um just milling around eating food going back into the water and um for about 20 minutes um i enjoyed its presence and um when i entered this in the world cup last year it, it um top scored for the club so i was really pleased with that okay so we in um we chose this as um as part of this year's selection in in the world cup um this is um a pair of common blues um during the the periods of lockdown or in between the periods of lockdown that we've had last summer i managed to get out and so 
in order to photograph the, the common blues, you've got to be out first thing in the morning. So in summertime, that, that means getting up at 4.30, going out um, um, and trying to capture them because once the sun gets onto them, they're off and they're away. So you, you've got to give it up for, for the next day. So, um, and if you can capture capture more than one on the same plant, on the same food plant, it, 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 it works better. This was a stack of 15 images um, to, to give me the depth of field, okay? And the, uh, this is a copper underwing, the, um, uh, the caterpillar, I, I took this down in Surrey. Normally I, I try and either stick to uh, my home area, uh, which is Lancashire, or I, I tend to go up into Scotland. This was down south of London. Um, and this was on a um, small branch. And, and again, this was focused at to give me the, the depth of field. It was mid afternoon and there were a lot of people around. Um, most people hadn't spotted it. But, but again, it was um, easily taken with the 100 mil macro. Um, and like I said, I, I do love nature, but within Wigan 10, um, they're bringing me up, um, or they, they're challenging me to, to take other genres. So um, that's just what I'm doing. Okay. Thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate uh, that. So Robert, last but by no means least, um, you've got minus two minutes to take us through your selection. Minus two minutes. That's yep. Go. Should be a challenge. Um, okay. So um, I have diamond two with diamond three approved by um, the English FIOP representative. It shall, it shall be winging its way to FIOP in March, I think, with the other UK applicants. So I've already started working on diamond four. So you've guessed from that that my interest in photography is really in, competi in competitive photography. So I'm looking for images with high impact um, that uh, the judges can look at very quickly and decide that they're, that they're kind of um, worthwhile. So most of my images have fairly clear backgrounds with the subject um, really standing out. Um, sport is a big interest of mine and um, you know this is a typical sport shot. Um, I like travel as well, um, but I'm also very keen in symmetry. So a lot of my images will be very symmetrical uh, in, in the presentation. And this is taken in Rajasthan near the Amur Fort. It's a fantastic step well. And was lucky enough that um, there was a lady wearing a um, very bright colors that worked very well with the walls. Some, uh, some, some nature images as well. If you're doing competitive photography, you want to have as many different genres in your collection as you possibly can. So I'll shoot every possible genre. So um, this nature shot's done particularly well, winning um, a couple of handfuls of gold medals uh, in field competitions. Um, I like action. So uh, not just sport, but uh, Bali's a, a, a great source of action as well. And if you combine Bali with the dancers throwing flower about, you can get quite dramatic um, images as well. Uh, sport again, clean backgrounds, focus on the subject. Um, I was wanting to get the referee in this shot. Very lucky that the referee was framed exactly by the leg. So you do need a little bit of luck, but luck doesn't come by itself. This is the result of you know many years of taking taekwondo shots finding angles and looking out for things. So these things just don't happen by accident. Yes, you have to be lucky, but generally the luck is a result of very hard work. I, again, a travel shot, um, a, a, a grandmother in, in, in India, um, just liking the expressions and the colors. And those of you familiar with India will know that this is in Jodhpur, which is called the Blue City for obvious reasons. I've recently been to um, uh, Slovenia to take pictures of churches and hills because I didn't have any landscapes in my portfolios and it was a, a genre that I was missing out on. So um, I spent um, um, a very good fortnight there looking for churches on top of hills. This is a, a shot in the early morning light. And I just like the balance of the highest mountain in, in, in Slovenia with the, with the church down there in the bottom right. 
wasps are everywhere. So you just attract them with some honey, uh, put down a baking tray um, and uh, they'll come and drink the honey. You've just got to hope that they make nice shapes when they land. So, you know, for every one of these images that works, there's probably 20, 30 that don't work, but it's good fun doing this. Uh, and you've got to be prepared to have wasps crawling in your ears, up your nose, all round about and so on. Um, but nice when they actually work. Uh, I achieved them fear in 2017 with a, a study of Turkish villagers in their environment. So these are environmental portraits. They're all pretty small, I know, um, at, at the moment, but you can, you can get the idea. Chose to use mono because I think mono really brings out the, um, the depth and the drama of an image. And a typical example of that would be in the next slide. So you, you'll always find, find men in coffee shops playing games. And this is a fairly typical example of, of what happens. And again, this image has been um, very successful in competition roundabout. And I think that is it from me, Austin. Yeah, thank you, Robert. Appreciate uh, appreciate that. So, um, yeah, with apologies that we've overrun uh, by what five, five, five or ten minutes. So, apologies uh, for that. Um, yeah, can we thank you for allowing us this opportunity to share our work and uh, uh, and to hopefully pick up a little bit about the personality of uh, Wigan Ten and and its members. Uh, yeah, so our thanks to you uh, for the FIAP group for, for organising it and also to the hundreds of people that are, have taken the time um, today to uh, to join us. So we're happy to stay around uh, a little bit longer. Paul, happy to take uh, questions and answers. So it's, uh, I personally am not under any time pressure, uh, but I understand you <clears throat> you may have other commitments. That's OK. And thank you very much indeed to you and to the other members of, of Wigan 10. Uh, some questions have.